Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Baby Assassins 2, Babies, a Japanese action comedy from 2023. Now one important observation from this film is the action director, Kenzuke Sonomura, who is in charge of action design for movies such as Hydra, Baby Assassins, Bad City, and most recently, One Percenter. And at this point, I need to identify him anytime he's in charge of action for a movie, because he has earned an impressive resume. I'm officially a big fan of this guy. Anytime he's involved with a film or TV show, whatever, we should be taking notice. Now, the following plot synopsis for Baby Assassins 2 was taken from the website Voices from the Balcony. Now, the girls are back in Baby Assassins 2, which stars Akari Takaishi and Saori Izawa, and they haven't gotten any better at dealing with day-to-day -day things like paying their bills. A gym membership that's been collecting late fees for five years and their insurance need to be paid immediately. But when robbers strike a bank, they intervene and get suspended from the Assassin's Guild for using their skills off the clock. But finding another, another job to pay the bills is the least of their problems. Two other assassins, Makoto and Yuri, are looking to move up from subcontractors to full members of the guild. Their manager suggests that they kill a couple members to create a vacancy. And how hard could killing a couple schoolgirls be? So the film opens with the rival hitmen, actually, who go on a job and succeed albeit in a relatively sloppy fashion. Afterward, they have a wrap-up meeting with, the, with their boss at a little restaurant and discuss how they're just not respected in the industry, you know? They get the job done, but nobody respects them. They're not properly compensated because they're not in the official Assassin's Guild. So they, they decide to kill our protagonists uh, in order to open up some employment opportunities for them to occupy. So it's, there's a blackly humorous premise here right off the bat. And that is the main conflict of the film. Now, the comedy is quite similar to the first film in the franchise. You know, we have these two girl assassins who are portrayed as socially awkward, goofy people with everyday problems that most of us face in real life. I mean, these girls in particular are maybe a bit on the lazy side and also terrible at personal finance. And much of the humor is generated by showing these lethal assassins being utterly incompetent at everyday life. And that's your, I mean, that's the humor in a nutshell for it. And we get scenes of them kind of hanging around their apartment, kind of like in the first film, but this movie adds in a bunch of other gags as well. You know, they get part-time jobs as mascots for kids, which is pretty hilarious. Uh, they have Zoom calls with their employers, and those are amusing because they they're constantly lectured by their boss to get their act together. I thought the comedy in this movie was probably even better than its predecessor, with even more kind of like laugh-out-loud moments. And the chemistry between the actresses is very good. It was good in the first film, but I think it's even better here. It's one of those things where it's the second time coming back to these roles. That everybody's working together again, and they're just more comfortable in the roles here. Pacing, I would say, is maybe a little bit better than its predecessor, but... There are a few spots during, I'd say, Act 2 where things slow down a little bit before the big finale. Action design is what you would expect from Kenzuke Sonomura, and that's a good thing. Very nicely choreographed fights and shootouts. You know, the fights have a lot of fast strikes, cool maneuvers, and it has that scrappy real-life feel to it as well. Like the opening hitman job is uh, basically a bunch of dudes in like this apartment or like small house, and they're wrestling on the floor constantly for possession of a few loaded guns that are there. And they keep like rest, trying to wrestle them away from each other and shoot each other. And it's something that you would expect from this guy. And it's, it's quite entertaining. Uh, the bank robbery scene is played for laughs, actually. They, they kind of blend in the action and the comedy even more in this in the same scenes. And this bank robbery scene is a great example. I was laughing a lot. It's like, it's one of the highlights of the movie. It shows up, I think, in the middle at some point. And it's one of the funnier and more creative scenes of either film. Certainly, it's, it's a highlight for sure. Now, 
when we get into Act 2 of this movie, I was a little bit concerned about who the big bad guy is going to be in this film. Because if you remember, uh, in the first film, we had Masanori Mimoto as the bad guy. And he was he was kind of intimidating. And he, he kicked our protagonist's butt for much of the finale in that film. You know, she kind of had to cheat to win at the end, right? But these rival hitmen in the sequel don't really seem like as much of a challenge for our protagonists. You know, so I was a little bit concerned about that. Now, they do up their game for the finale, which is longer and even better than the finale of the first film. It has a different vibe, though. You know, it feels like a showdown between evenly matched fighters, which eliminates the intimidation factor. But it still provides a pretty fun experience. And there are some laugh-out-loud moments during the, even the final fight of this movie, which were kind of surprising and, and entertaining. So I was satisfied. you know, And I like how they tried to go for something a little bit different with this for the final fight, and I do appreciate it. So I'm very happy that you know Kenzuke Sonomura and his team are giving us action films like this from Japan. I want more of this, definitely. And I certainly recommend Baby Assassins too. I think if you like the first film, there's a chance you might like this one even a little bit more. So definitely check it out. Currently available streaming on YouTube. It's also available on Blu-ray. And as always, I'll see you next time.